a number of years ago. Great. Welcome to the College of Complexes. My name is yeah, Tim. Right. And I'd like to welcome all of you for tonight's presentation by Charlie Paydock. There are two rules that the college, the college understands. The first one is one fool at a time. The second is no personal attacks. Oh, come on. All right. The college consists of the following format. We have a brief announcements period. Then we have the uh, speaker who speaks. Then we have a question and answer period. And then we have the infamous rebuttal period. <laughs> My name is Tim. I'm going to be talking to you now. Charlie Paydock with his nefarious speech. Why we need new national holidays and should start all over again. Let's welcome Charlie Paydock. I usually speak this time of year because we can't book if I'm anybody around the holidays, so I'll have to do. Um, why am I talking about holidays? I started attending uh, various uh, street festivals around town any number, number of years ago because I discovered it was a very economical date. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was curious about what, in fact, the ethnic groups were celebrating. I picked up a book on holiday poetry and, and then a book on Christmas and went from there. And I've had a little interest off and on for a number of years. But anyhow, there's four parts to this. Uh, I'm going to give a little background in history uh, and where the federal role is in, in national holidays. Uh, then we're going to look at our current holidays. I'm going to go through the year. And then the fourth part, I'm going to give my recommendations for the new, uh, new calendar and new holiday. I'm doing this entirely without notes, by the way. See that? I know. It's all in here. Expert. Expert, right. You got it. All right, next. All right, presentation. All right, that's a little intro there. Uh, okay, uh, about a good 50 years ago, uh, Piper, uh, Joseph Piper wrote a book called Leisure is the Basis of Culture. And what does he mean by this? Uh, is that leisure is not just an absence of action. You don't have to read these. An absence of activities, but it, it should be an affirmation. Uh, the Greek word for leisure uh, produced skola, which in turn gave us the word school. It should be more than just sitting around in, in indolency, uh, but uh, such as this character here. And what we currently have now is a haphazard collection of events with no discernible reason behind any of them that I could perceive. Next, please. Okay, another thing, this is, there's something of a categorical imperative operative that we should undertake to do something to correct the situation right now. And it's obvious there are signs of cultural decline. And we've got to do something right now. This is a list of just the ones that I observed. Uh, looking, there's increased indifference, ineffective government, superficiality, all oh, nothing but that. Um, there's no consistent arguments against violence. Can you believe that? That's surely a sign of decadence. Entitlement philosophies among the young. All of them. And leaders have no more authority and base and immoral entertainment. That's for sure. Anyhow, the final indicator of the demise of a civilization is the failure of its people to see what is happening. Right. Next, please. All right. Now, one sign of decline, and this is my own thing that I observed. I was watching this guy give a stump speech on C-SPAN, and I couldn't believe it, but he was putting down philosophy and philosophers. And then he actually did it again during the debate. And this guy here, Marco, says we don't need philosophers and you shouldn't become philosophy majors to study philosophy, you should study art welding, I guess. 
and that's what America wants. Well, this is ridiculous. Well, a guy running for president, you know there is probably no country on earth that owes more to its origin to the philosophers than the United States of America. This is absurd to say that, well, well, thank you very good for helping us design our nation, but we don't need you anymore because we're all becoming welders. That's what we want these days. Anyhow, next, please. Uh, now, going back, and then go back to the ancients because the record, historical record, is kind of clear, so I kind of stuck to the Middle Ages here regarding holidays. But they didn't have modern technology and the luxuries, obviously, in the Middle Ages. But festival and fi they had festivals and feasts, uh, usually agricultural celebrations tying to the crop cycles. Uh, one of the things I discovered about this is that there were, in fact, celebrations, but two different levels. Um, only the wealthy were, got wheat, eat white bread, uh, and while well, the rest of them, the, the peasants, uh, ate a dark type of bread made from rye or barley. Um, also, meat eating was relatively uh, confined to the upper classes. Um, and they thought that eating vegetables was only fit for peasants. Yeah. <laughs> Next. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there's one more one on, on details, and uh, there is some validity to this. I didn't know the figures. I didn't put those in because I didn't know how accurate they were. But, it, but it's quite conceivable, and this is not, probably without dispute, that the people and the medieval people enjoyed more time off than we do. We do. Sundays were labor free. They had agricultural festivals, as I said. Weddings, they might take a week off. And you fast forward to the 21st century, uh, when U.S. is the only advanced country with no national vacation policy. This is absolutely true. There's no vacation policy whatsoever. Uh, Americans must keep on working through public holidays and vacation days. This is very common, go unused. And people continue working, it's been shown, shown uh, through their holidays, certainly with connectivity today so electronically. Next, please, young man. We're slaves. <coughs> okay, these are just some photos. I always like to incorporate artworks in my presentations. Next, please. And you can see some Peter Bruegel and things like this. But, Festivals and holidays certainly are an established cultural element in the Western uh, society. Go on. Now, uh, I, okay, let's get this out of the way. And we realize this, that there's all kinds of things that was it a pagan origin, a religious holiday, and so forth. But, okay, many holidays are religion, religion-based in origin. Uh, however, I think it, it's not too hard to ascertain that those origins no longer relate to a modern secular society here. Next, please. Okay, this is a problem that's ongoing right now. This stuff is in the news this week. Of course, it's growing minorities are demanding that public schools close. The Muslims are saying they shouldn't close just on Christian holidays. <laughs> but they wanted to close um, on, on the end of Ramadan and other such events. They actually, I ran into one school district, they're not calling it Christmas, or they think that's going to work or something, you know, uh, winter holiday. And then they said, well, it's not Christian, it's not a Christian holiday, it's just a winter holiday. Next, please. Yeah, okay. These are some things I just came across. These are hot things in the news not making these up. Problems have, have arisen due to the holidays, unless you have some order and discipline to the topic. But at one university, and this I, I, yeah, I looked this up, they're telling them, they warned them not to use the colors red and green in decor because they were not neutral enough and may not reflect an inclusive holiday spirit. <laughs> so you got to have earth tones, like I'm partial to. Earth tone colors. You know. Uh, this was another one I read. I looked this up, and 
but this town uh, it was passing an ordinance against street entertainers. But anyhow, it got construed that they were out like Christmas caroling, which I didn't mind. I'm not opposed to it. Probably a good idea. But anyhow, <laughs> it's an issue in this one one community. Next, please, Tim. But you're correct. Right. <laughs> All right, this, yeah, I used to say this all the time to my clerks and, and my staff, they would ask me for a day off, and I always would remind them, I said, you know, what would have happened if all the pioneers had decided to take a day off instead of settling the United States? Where would we be? But nevertheless, honestly, they're hard working aid. Honestly, I don't think they had any will to find holidays in the early part of this nation. Next, please. Okay, this is some technical stuff. We'll get it out of the way. Holiday is a day set aside by custom or law in which normal activities are suspended or reduced. Generally, holidays are intended to allow individuals to celebrate or commemorate an event or a tradition or cultural or religious significance, you know. Okay, they may be designated by the government, by religious organizations or other groups, like including the college complexes. Okay, the degree, to, this is important, this comes up, the degree to which normal activities are reduced by a holiday may depend on local call, laws, customs, and the type of job being held or personal choices. Yeah, this is a problem that's the reason I think we got to get rid of this personal choice stuff. All right, next please. <laughs> well, if you want a day off, all right, uh, being uh, involved in labor activities, uh, I've known this for many years. The Fair Labor Standards Act, passed in 1935, does not require an employer to pay for time not work, such as vacations or holidays, regardless. So you cannot submit a claim under FLSA um, if you're denied a, a day off. Uh, and generally, that's why you got to have a union. These, these type of benefits, holiday benefits, <coughs> are, I like this one. I said, between, an agreement between an employer and an employee. I actually did run into that one time. There was a guy who made a deal with an employer. He, he wanted to have one week off a year without pay. That was it. And they agreed to it, you know. He thought he achieved something, you know. I said, you got a vacation without pay? <laughs> and that, that's wonderful. Uh, all right, next, please. All right, some more. I'm going to keep you reading, and then we'll be done with this. Um, we've actually had holidays that were created and disappeared. <coughs> New Orleans, Battle of New Orleans Day was a major holiday. No one probably here you have ever heard of it before. Uh, in 68, they shifted all the holidays to Monday, except for the 4th. Um, the president can, and I like this as a federal employee because he did it a couple times for me. <laughs> he declared national holidays. Um, and um, this is for your uh, atheist people out there. In 1999, the U.S. District Court denied the charge that Christmas Day's federal status, status violated the Establishment Clause of Religion. So, all right, next please. All right, another thing, since we're on government and holidays, if you want to become a citizen of the United States, you are asked 10 questions out of 100, and you may be asked these questions. So it is part of your knowledge of being a citizen of the United States one, in fact, are, you certainly have to know what the 4th of July is, I guess. All right, next. <coughs> um, there is a proposal. We got this guy talking about elections here. 
It is kicked around. They want to make uh, Election Day a national holiday. Yeah. And the arts conservatives uh, also want to make it income tax day. I don't really care when you civilians pay your income tax as long as you do so. That's the reason of the federal government. Right? You just don't, <laughs> just don't forget, all right? <laughs> Earlier, like, anyhow, um, and I'll put a little, I've, I peppered this presentation with little commercials. And there's one for the Green Party and I this and the independent voters of Illinois. If you're interested, please see me afterwards. Alright, next. If you want to join up for Bernie too, I'll get to Oh no, no, no. no. Alright. No, no. I, there are celebrations, anthropologically speaking, in all cultures, uh, Tibetans, uh, Southeast Asia, uh, Native Americans always have four seasons, uh, powwows. Uh, next, please. Sometimes they put on some really nice decorative things. Unlike the United States, these people are serious about this. They obviously spend a few bucks on these outfits, you know. <laughs> and have a nice show, you know. Only the All right, next one. Right? And of course, Chinese oh, New Year is going to have a dragon here and there. Very entertaining, I guess. Yes. All right, we August Moon Festival we next. Thank you, Charles. And these are some other ones. Oh, Even yeah. Druids get in on the app. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is Holly. This is They're doing this now before they run marathon races. They're getting all decorated in these colors. And of course the lantern festivals and and in Japan they float them and in China or they, in Japan they float them on water and in China in, in the sky. And I don't know where these guys are, but I'd like to see this parade myself. Anyhow, next one. I also encountered this one in my looking at holidays around the world as a peculiar one. There is uh, communities in, in Asia that have a celebration dedicated to a monkey's banquet. Charlie, uh, it's for my... <laughs> It looks like some of us members of the college, Charlie. <laughs> uh, which is pretty cool. I mean, they had like 400 monkeys. Uh, I show up to this thing. <laughs> I mean, we're all, we're all kind of monkey monsters uh, around here anyway. You go through a lot of bananas real quickly. <laughs> look, at all, look at this guy. <laughs> I'm I'm sure that, to, it looks a lot right, like Charlie. Next one. I did not authorize you to use my photo there. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> now, I said to myself, Let's go pick a country and compare it to the United States and let's see how we compare it. We're going to see what's going on in the United States next. So what did I pick? My, my friend uh, Stanfield Smith was here talking about North Korea. So I, I said, let's take a look at what they're doing in North Korea. Actually, one of the things you can look at is they actually have, it stuck out to me immediately, they actually have more holidays than we have here in the United States. Next, please. And look at this, the young people. This is nice, playing the guitars and kids singing. You know, we'll see what's going on in the States in a little bit. I said, then I looked it up, I did a Google image. I said, wow, this looks like a pretty nice event. Go on. And then they had these uh, little uh, shows. That's a very rhythmic shows. Accordion like recitals, pretty good. That accordions apparently are fairly popular, but go on. Oh, and it's just some more that I came across. See, this is well behaved. This is it reflects positively on this culture and this country. And clear anybody and believe you me, I even I found some videos. These are impressive. These are pretty I ended up watching it twice. All right, Timmy, next one. And this is the last one. The only that says it to clear. Can you imagine how long this event is, this parade is? You know, and even the detail that they, the painstaking detail that goes on, you know. But anyhow, one more. And that's the last one. 
that's for, you know, though these E people are well behaved, young kids, instead of hooliganism, such as here in the in the United States. All right. All right. Unquestionably, my favorite holiday that I know about for many, many years is Lei Feng Day in China. And thousand, this is this guy is cool. He was an altruistic soldier who died tragically in an accident as he at a relatively young age. But every on Lei Feng Day in March, all the children. Uh, they draw pictures and pen essays <coughs> and sing songs about, there's all kinds of, there's thousands of stories about Lei Feng. And like one, I was told you one, he, the, uh, Lei Feng was going to school and he found a pen, a really nice pen, and instead of keeping it for himself, he turned it into the teacher and said, we have to find the, the person who lost his pen so we could return it and the rightful owner. There's all kinds of didactic stories like this that go on. There's the movies about this. He would take all his salary from being a soldier and give it to poor people, kept very little for himself, or gave it to communes. He, gave, he actually saved up, according to one story. Now, some may say these are generated by the bureaucracy and may not have validity, but he apparently saved up his money and gave a hundred yen to a commune that he heard that was in need, considering you made about six yen a month, that was a good bit of money, you know. So he's a very generous guy, but I love the stories about Feng, uh, Lei Feng. Next one. And this is one, another example you can see in, in his stories. Grandma was washing and then the baby was crying, so the kids got together and washed the clothes for Grandma and didn't tell her and just put hung him up to dry on the line. And these are the, this is what, this is something you, you draw. Next one. Uh, there's a game you can play, unlike these other games in the States where you see how many things you can kill or something. And on this game, the winner is, tries wins points by doing good deeds. Um, now recently, and this is true, this is in the New York Times, uh, on Lei Feng Day, 1,000 college students showed up at the public transit stations in Shanghai and gave lectures on the importance of good manners when traveling. Well, that's pretty cool, you know. And they, they have other heroes like this there's a couple of them. I like this guy, Iron Man Wang, who dog paddled in a van of cement when the machine for, for mixing the cement uh, wasn't working. Uh, and there was an electronic worker who assembled five million radio parts without a single mistake. Now these are, these are things to celebrate. Yes. All right, next. Okay, I won't belabor this, the detrimental effects of our current holidays. They're randomly over time. There's no oversight if a, if a holiday's lost its meaning, uh, particularly if it has poor reflection upon us, um, if they become over-commercialized, um, and if by any chance there's an equal opportunity for participation. We should look at them again. All right, next one. And I'm recommending the U.S. Department of Celebrations to maintain the calendar, um, to provide grants and support for events and performances, and th to foster uh, holidays with some substance. Okay, next. And unquestionably, anybody who looks upon this will see immediately that we have to end the corporate control of the U.S. culture. They're using these holidays only to, only to get customers, and they could care less. And we have to restore authenticity, meaning, Mr. Philosopher, and substance. And believe you me, we'll get into it a little bit further. You're, this is absolutely, categorically true. They've taken over our culture. 
The capital is fascist. Yeah. Next one. Social yeah, believe you me, that if you get into some of this stuff, they want to control the whole darn social media, even the, the other part of the, the internet. They even want to get, I read things like how to put stuff in, in the, the conversation things, stuff like this, phony, phony blog postings for your product and stuff like this. These guys, there's nothing they won't do to make a dollar. Let me tell you. All right, next one. And I don't know, a fun thing I thought I'd show, and if you're in Google Chrome, you may see that they change these all the time. They, uh, Google does to match the holiday, these little, what do we call them, Timmy? I call uh, they're, they're, um, they have a contest for these. Yeah, I know. It, um, I, the, it scratches me, but they're Google, even, Google Doodles. Yeah, that's it. And they're even hard to to copy. I had a hard. Some of them are pretty cool. They had parades and stuff like this. But yeah, Google Doodles. So, uh, all right, next one. Uh, actually, the computers have kind of helped the holiday because you can go out and you can uh, 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 not make a hallmark uh, richer and make your own cards. You know, high quality. It says. All right. Oh, just uh, on a technical issue, <coughs> in every small, medium-sized public library of the United States, you'll find this reference book. If you're looking up anything on holidays, it goes by the name Chase's Calendar of Events. will tell you everything you need to know about holidays uh, and anniversaries. Uh, one of the dreams of the librarian is to design a <laughs> reference book in which carries, carries your name. And so you can go anywhere and see any librarian throughout the world and say, Chase's, do you have Chase's? And they will know immediately what you're talking about. You know. All right, thank you. Next one. Um, of course, I was talking with the waitress earlier. There's all kinds of silly holidays. I wouldn't pay much attention to these. I don't know who celebrates National Explosive Ordnance Disposal Day, but it sounds a, unless you're a Muslim. <laughs> and it means Johnson Day? Come on. Uh, anyhow, you can look up in Chases. You can find a whole list of these. Uh, okay, happy everything day. Next one. Uh, what is, the, I looked up today, and December the 12th, this is what we're celebrating. Uh, ding -a -ling day. I didn't know what that was. Don't step Maybe on Maybe I looked it. in the mirror. Ding -a, -ling. <laughs> ding a ling means uh, call up people. It actually was started by a guy here in Melrose Park. But you call people, friends or relatives, you haven't heard from them in a while. Now there may be a reason why you haven't talked to them in a while, and it's probably best not to. <laughs> but in Dingling Day, and that's what we're celebrating today, points out of day, gingerbread house day. All right, next one. All right, now we're getting in, and there's my synopsis as move along here. <laughs> Let's take a look. In American <laughs> health holidays. Where's my class? You sound very healthy, uh, Charlie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Get back. Seven oh seven, Charlie. We got time. <laughs> From the cough into the mic. I look at current U.S. celebrations. <laughs> hey, I came across National <laughs> Clean Out Your Refrigerator. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but we're gonna do. I gonna try to follow the year. So. I'm going to be following the year in this as best I can. Next. Okay, New Year's holiday. I cannot perceive any reason why we need to retain this as an event. Oh, uh, no. Intoxicated young people on the streets. Uh, how does it look to other countries? What about us intoxicated old uh, people? Well, if you. 
Either way, I, I'm concerned about the youth of our nation here. You guys are aren't worth worrying about. Uh, and we're celebrating, as much as I can perceive, absolutely nothing. Thank you, St. Charles. Yeah. All right, Thank you, St. Charles. Uh, where did this all come from? This is one, actually, that you can trace back to the Romans. Um, the, uh, it, it originally, they, they always thought the first day of the year, and quite logically, was the beginning of the first day of spring, or summer, in April, or March, the spring. It makes sense. That would be the beginning of the year, but then they moved it back. Um, but from what I can ascertain that it was said that one should have a drink for every each future year of life you wanted to live. So that's where the drinking part comes from. And apparently this was a heavy duty holiday. They would get drunk and sit around the Tiber River and set up tents even. And, uh, I drink anyway. to that. All right, uh, the next one that comes up in the holiday calendar is Martin Luther King Day, which I won't focus on too much, but the other one is, is somewhat of a counter holiday. Talk about holidays causing controversy here, and the end up, and there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to this, but there's a multitude of Confederate holidays. Um, Robert E. Lee's birthday, Confederate Memorial Days, uh, Lee Jackson Days, uh, and yet they don't celebrate Martin Luther King Day. Um, I like this Confederate woman dressed up as a Confederate widow. All right, next one. Uh, there's even different dates. They like Confederates believe in states' rights, I guess. And granted, there is no Confederacy, but you can see what they can't even agree on a date for this uh, Jefferson Davis board. That's what I mean. Everybody kind of made up their own day, a, a Confederate type date. I like these old guys. Like, <laughs> they probably know every little bit of trivia about the Civil War, I guarantee you. <laughs> All right, next. Now, why we should have any kind no. of holiday. That's all raise the Ku Klux Klan no weapons and weapons and tea party type stuff is beyond me. But um, anyway, we've got to eradicate this holiday altogether. Like these kind of guys, look at Yahoo. Libertarians, Anyhow, next. There's another one that I don't fully comprehend. I know there's all sorts of little folk wisdom, bits of wisdom. <laughs> now you're stepping on and my And my mother nose. actually comes from this town in Pennsylvania. Folks are Tony Phil. It was filmed in Woodstock, Charlie. <laughs> that is but my, my niece was in that movie. I have no this is this is like country lore that is not you don't pay attention to any of this. Anyhow, we, this one makes no sense. Next slide. There is, however, I discovered a minister who keeps posting live sermons on the YouTube. He's got several, he's, and uh, he, he's taking it up to against these holidays and sinful holidays, in particular Groundhog Day. He even claims that you can see that they had these guys in black, the town fathers, whatever. He claims those, that's actually in, they're replacing a coven of witches. Pinhead day. You know. <laughs> but Cold this guy's day. insistent that these holidays are as evil as can be. Uh, all right, next one. Uh, President's Day, I cannot ascertain any reason. It seems to exist only. Uh, for the purpose of selling appliances and automobiles. Here you got Abe Lincoln driving a Chevy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, can, I can ascertain no single event that was scheduled to take place on this day. Anywhere. The, uh, the, the, the spectacular Nothing. savings at Crystal Lake Toyota. <laughs> not not outside. Nothing. All right, next one. 
Oh, this is some more than that. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. There was a poker tournament. <laughs> I mean, this, and the, it's just how we honor, oh, the mattress sale. That's right. <laughs> mattress land, get over the mattress land. Um, it's always a gimmick that brings them in, Charlie. It doesn't even honor our phone, the, you know, these guys. All right, next one. All right, Valentine's Day, I'm sorry. This was, no, no, this one's got to go. Oh. This has got to go. It's nothing for but retail, retail sales of candy, flowers, cards, jewelry, and dining. This is a costly holiday. It's American way. No, no, no. Bring out the next one. It's Americanism. Here's another thing. Hey, this is what you left it out. Yeah, this is it. Restaurant sales surpass grocery sales in the United uh -oh. States. Uh -oh. What is this culture coming into? You know? Oh, no. Absolutely. Come on, guys. Unite. Next one. That produces jobs, Charlie. Oh, yeah. oh I'm doing a little music in this presentation. It's a little break. We like love it, Charlie. We but <laughs> it's nothing but purchasing romance. Is what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not you know the, 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 did Fred and Sarah ever have an occupation or a job? I don't seem to recollect. We just kind of mucked around town, you know. Uh, but anyhow, this is kind of a sappy thing, but... <laughs> All right. That's your world, Charlie. Now, this is an... If you want to honor women, well, I'm not saying we're not going to do without anything whatsoever, but you have to respect women who are deserve it and merit it and to achieve it like this girl is providing food for the country by fixing a tractor there actually i'm looking at that poster in there that that actually seems to imply that that woman was guiding the path for the long march of german mao which would be amazing but anyhow if you can see they celebrated and this goes back in socialist countries now uh, Frauentag, uh, Woman's Day, March the 8th. Yeah. Now, instead of that frilly stuff, and you know, da, 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 you know, this is the one with a little more, more to it. All right? Now, this is, I decided to take a look at what precisely is the status of the female in the United States. So I looked at some of the magazine covers. Um, that, and what I see, what are they placing importance on? You saw the previous slide compared with this. This girl's worried about looking pretty for a party. And over here, there's she's planning a massive shopping guide. <laughs> and the middle one, amazingly enough, I discovered I, is a magazine for teenagers who are pregnant called It's Okay. <laughs> 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 Anyhow, next one. All right, there's a little reversion there. The socialist march. There, now that instead of Valentine's, hey, I'm willing to sell this one. You got it. You got me. All right, next one. And I guess we're gonna have to celebrate it by fiat pretty soon. And that be a good idea. This one, she becomes president of the United oh, no. States. Oh. It's a given, you know. No, no, oh yeah. No, no. For you. For you. Yeah. For you. <laughs> for you. No way, no. All right. All right. Another one, and we're continuing in March. Is uh, the day that I personally celebrate. And I wanted to point out to you that being a Lithuanian, we're well forward-looking people in a culture. There was the picture of the president of the Lithuania. The and the, I, if you can see the colors here, so yellow, green, and red. Show the next one. I don't know if you can see this, but it's yellow, green. This is an actual photograph of Lithuania replicating the, fla the colors of their national flag. And it's not photoshopped either. All right, next one. And here, instead of the hooligans in the streets, you can see the Lithuanians even try to be like the Koreans and do a flag. They didn't, they didn't quite do too good. It wasn't as precise. But it was their first try, so. 
They'll get it better next year. <laughs> next. All right, following oh, into oh. our year, we passed in March. And what do we got? Wait a minute. This is great. Where's Butler? Where's Pat Butler? You saw the Lithuanian, Lithuanian day. You saw that real nice? Yeah. Beautiful. The same, and then you come to the Irish. <laughs> Look at this. You saw the Lithuanians. Now you can see the Irish. What does that tell you? Look at this. And he walked down the street. <laughs> this has got to go. There's no point to this. Next one. Um, <laughs> I just threw this in because there's a marketing thing. There's a thing you can uh, you can look it up. It's called Day of the Year, and every day they send you notice that what the day is like National Potato Day or something. Uh, I did see this one. It caught my eye, and it's not going on. They're trying to. It's like internet marketing, and and they said on March 26 you could bake up your own day. I looked through the list of suggested ones, it didn't seem interesting, except this one. Uh, I guess you could remember your best friends or something like that. All right, next one. Oh, yeah. Uh, we celebrated this year at the College of Complexes about a year ago. Um, they should make this a national holiday. Yes. Oh, an <laughs> April Fool's Day. And I actually subscribed to the New York Times and remember seeing this ad and reading it. Uh, yeah, Taco Bell um, bought the Liberty Bell <laughs> to assist the United States financially. They said they will let it remain accessible to the public. <laughs> this was an actual ad a few years ago. Um, there's no one can figure out where this holiday comes from. There is some reason to think it may come from the Romans. There is, a, oh, where's Butler? He just missed it. Uh, there is some reason to believe, um, well, actually, wait a minute. A historian, and even this has got to be cool about, because historians will write purposefully phony origins of this day and see if you can catch it. <laughs> So you can't even trust the historians on them. Where were you, Butler? It was just, let's go back for Pat to say. Yeah, let's go back. Yeah. One more. No, uh, one more. Taco Bell, they don't have the best historians. I'm Lithuanian. Lithuanian says March 16th. I orderly look at nice, see this Butler? Beautiful old kids singing songs. Let's see, say the Irish are up. What are they up to the next one? Go to the next one. Look at it. You got a green in your cap. Come on. All right, skip it. And you're the one that's always ranting about ethnic stereotypes. Good front day. Irish. Next. Oh, I thought I'd throw in some funny ones here that uh, have happened on fooling people. I guess you want to trick people into believing something. Uh, but there's only four in here. I don't know if you can see it. Red doesn't show up, apparently. Um, but BBC ran a, a thing, a news report on trees, the bull weevils that were affecting trees that you could grow. Um, um, spaghetti and people called in the station asking how they could cultivate spaghetti trees. Uh, they also told people that they had implemented smell-o-vision um, and people reported to the station that it worked. It was really worked well. And another time they had a British astronomer um, that said at a precise time uh, gravity would somehow not be in operation and if you jumped up you could might be weightless and people experimented at this at precisely 947 they started jumping up into the sky and we wrote it to BBC that the experiment was a success and they could achieve flotation. Uh, the last one is um, you've got to watch out for Google. They do this all the time. I've seen any number of these. 
Google at a time was offering service where you could download objects such as your keys for a small price and uh, put it in your files so you could retrieve it later. But all right, next one. Easter, we all know, is pagan and rabbits and yeah, Teutonic babes and you know, goddess of spring. Uh, the name's never used in scriptures and it's not associated biblically with Jesus or nothing. So, okay, we know all that. Move on. Uh, one of them I, we've got to keep in some fashion is no doubt Earth Day. Uh, I know you're all friends of the earth, such as I am. Next one. And by the way, I told you a little commercial break here. <laughs> if you wish to become a Chicago Green, you're welcome to our meeting tomorrow at 2 p.m. So, all right, next one. Uh, for some reason, talk about coincidence of errors that have crept into the schedule. We actually have two holidays. Celebration, celebrating labor, uh, May 1st, and then along came the Knights of Labor in New York, and it actually was an anti-commie kind of thing they were doing. President Cleveland made the, the date in September, so maybe we really don't need two of these to celebrate the same thing, and we probably should agree on one day. All right, next. Seek of the Mayo is a pretty cool day. Uh, amazingly enough, it is not celebrated in Mexico. <laughs> when we celebrate it, it doesn't seem to bother us. <laughs> no, it really isn't a holiday in Mexico. All right, next one. They lost the See, war. we're going through the year now. Now we're up to May 10th, <laughs> National Train Day, which many of you, that is the date that they laid the golden spike, you know, finished the transcon. Uh, I believe this is an authentic ad put out by Amtrak, which I found a little peculiar. Next one. <laughs> if, oh, it's another a little thing here. If you're interested in transportation, no. I invite you to the next meeting of the Railway and Locomotive Historical Society. Okay. All right. Uh, just a little aside here. And regarding holidays and scheduling, one thing you have to keep in mind is that there is a transportation element to holidays, and the spacing of them is certainly a good idea and a factor that has to be taken into consideration. You don't want the nightmare that takes place, such in Asia on the New Year's, where uh, it actually works against people because the people that cannot, the trains can't accommodate everyone to travel, and so they end up with disappointment and, and things like that. And that's not the purpose of a holiday. Now go ahead. Okay, there's a whole group here. Uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day, all of these. By the way, in origin, all of these are retail inspired. Mother's Day is nothing but a John Wanamaker ho holiday. Department store holiday, you yeah. know, and from what I understand, Gramps here in Walton, what is he a commie? <laughs> I think so. All right, next one, Flag Day and Independence Day. Um, maybe we could combine these and so forth. Independence Day. Um, a woman I came across this. Um, they regarded her American flag as a holiday decoration. And you're supposed to remove your decorations within 10 days following the holiday. And they want, I guess they didn't want flags, people to fly flags. So they fined her $75 for not taking down their holiday decoration, which was an American flag. All right, next one. Yeah, Columbus Day, and I know all the uproar about this, you know. It actually began, this is actually one of our latest holidays, national holidays to be adopted, only in, uh, by President Roosevelt around 1937, uh, due to the influence of the Italian community in the United States. 
Next. But of course, the Native American population uh, don't look very positively upon Mr. Columbus. Right here. You know. Okay, next one. This is just a picture. I, I don't. Does Rod show up on this thing or not? Is it? It, 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 it's, it's not, but we can it's probably. Uh, oh, all right. Hang on. I can, it's I red, can, white, and blue. No big deal. It's not that important. I can get it. Let's going. move on. Get, get and up. this one has suddenly become the holiday of holidays. I don't know why. But if you think this is something we should celebrate, if you think this is positive, Steve. <laughs> Somebody reported one of the people in the community where my, my sister worked in the village office. And they, they said that some guys' decorations were scaring your children. They wanted them to take it down. They couldn't get home. They didn't want to go home. All right, next one. Oh, I don't know if you can see these. This is movies that are out there. Is this what we want influencing our culture? No. The kind of make this movie. No. Um, yeah, we we'll go see a movie called Hatchet. No, no. I want to see Zombie Diaries. How did you get to see this? You know. All right, we'll go on. Um, Veterans Day decorate. Veterans Day, November 11. I think World War One has kind of disappeared here. And actually, yeah, well, I'm there. All the veterans are gone. I mean, uh, we've had other wars. We've had 125 wars since then. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, and it's decoration day. To me, it's kind of more of a personal day than. Uh, no, I'm serious. It's, it's a personal day, and I don't know uh, if we should be doing uh, collective events. All right, next one. And Thanksgiving. Um, which I love you know about, no need for me to move on. Uh, I just threw in my poem that some of you may have been lucky enough to receive this year by James Whitcomb Riley about the frosts on the flag. We got a green pumpkin. Anyhow, go on. Uh, other elements of the holiday that have caused some concern in the animal rights community in which I participate. Next one. Also, by one thing about the holiday, though, uh, this is something that we will feature on the New York Chicago Railroad once we become operational. So you can go see the parade. Next one. Uh, the next day, of course, is Black Friday, which is apparently, apparently officially recognized in 24 states. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Really? Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, oh next. And this is the one you may have gotten, the places that open and not open. They care for their employees or not. <laughs> Next. And now we come to this one. We could get the whole program. Guys, I did last year on Christmas. Keep it. Look at this. Look at this. Materialism. We have a, I'll show you my love to buy buying material. Items. Look at this. Ridiculous. Chad, Next what about one. Hanukkah? Hanukkah. Feliz Navidad. Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Next one. On. That's Hanukkah. religious holidays. And religious groups. Goodbye. Adios. <laughs> All of them. Adios. Bingo. Off to the moon. Adios. Goodbye. <laughs> you can get sick. There's, this happens. <laughs> it's supposedly it's not too bad. No. It's like like a minor little heart tremor. But most people recover, but it can be precipitated by when you have Christmas lights. But don't work. Okay. <laughs> All right, next one. Hurry up. No. Uh, the oh, businesses no. are, this, this is just one indication when they hire 100,000 employees to sell you stuff. Going crazy. Next. Oh, the big controversy, I don't know if you're aware of it, about the design of Starbucks coffee cup. <laughs> they finally they put a basic red and said, oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. And this one just came out, this book. Um, uh, that 
he, the author uh, David Johnson says that Christmas has become an expensive and stressful obligation and not a joyful celebration. Oh, and he says, man, does he not like Santa Claus? He says, teaching children to believe in Santa Claus is not harmless fun. It is bad parenting that hampers critical thinking, imaginative play, and moral values. Look at that. Santa Claus is, that's what happens to little <laughs> kids, right. man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, all right, move on. Oh, you can't see this. These are my, this is what we think is Santa Claus. Right? This is, you, that's what we think of Santa Yeah, take his treats, man. Oh, uh, this, this is a Chicago-based company. This is where we've come. You don't even, well, I guess if you want to avoid holiday heart attack, you can hire this woman who has a fascinating website. Uh, she began a career, she, and she was a, in a philanthropic activities, but then she wanted something more technical, she thought. So she entered the world of Christmas decorations. Um, but for 950 bucks, she'll come over and put a string of lights over your doorway. This is not cheap. But anyhow, she's Chicago based. She was in the news. You send a photo into your home and they do some little yada 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 with transparent overlays and send it back to you, probably a bill for 50 bucks. Go ahead. Now we got to change the calendar. I'm not going to get into this. Very simply, 13 months is what we do. We insert a new month, so between June and July. You come up to the precise. Every month is identical. You only need this calendar for once. It's good forever. You can memorize it, and you know precisely what the date is. There's a little thing where they add a day on the leap year, and they do have one extra day at the end of the year. They call that year day. Next. There is a copy of it. We had a thing in this at the college. I passed these out. But there's your universal calendar. That, now we can bring some uniformity. Go on. There's the year. Now if you're going to schedule holidays, as we're about to do, you can see you've got a nice clean calendar. And it's uniformity year. What Ready to go. Charlie, what day of the week is December 29th? <coughs> uh, that's your day. There's no day of the week. No. That's the year day that you have to have. I didn't mention it. What Charlie? about June 29th? That's the year. Charlie, what does it mean after June? What, what, what the name of the S? Sol. What does it mean? Sol. Sol? That's, that's Sol. the name yeah. of the month. Sun. Sol. But you have to add an extra day, one extra day. It's 364. I didn't get time to read it. Sol. Sol. All right, that's the new year. This is what we have right now. Actually, there's four months in our current calendar in which there's not a, nothing going on. We're not going to survive that. You know? So August, uh, March, that's not really good planning. You know, next one, April, nothing. All right, my suggestions for new and improved holidays. Da -da. Oh, here we go, here we yes. go. We're waiting. Woo. Are you are you still are, is that Come on, right? Tim. Tim. All right, <laughs> commencement day. This is the beginning of the year to plan activities. Yeah. Things of this year. Let's see the next one. Yeah, this is when you should have public hearings of government entities. Oh yeah. And say this is what we want. This is the kind of public transit. Will, we want projects uh, uh, to be undertaken, improvements. That will deliver. There you go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Next one, Civilization Day. So let, let's look upon what the achievements of mankind right. and the accomplishments through the centuries. Right. If you go in other countries, they have museums of civilization. Noble you know, that's what, and people don't know anything about this stuff. Yeah. Oh, my Next one. All right, we're going to group all these traditions and ethnic days. Multi, multi, you can go to multi, I recommend you oh. go to an ethnic restaurant, try out different <laughs> ones, you know, this is some, you know, if they like this, people enjoy this, you know, and it's not bad entertainment, I mean, I can, you know, but we got to get rid of the monoculture. Yeah. No, the, the opposite of the monoculture 
and put those guys out of business at least for a day. Next. No, no for 30 days. Yeah, we got to have an academy day. Yes. You know, and for schools to people have open house, things of that nature. Let's focus on education. Oh, yeah. Have events at schools, we're colleges. Too, yeah. We're too stupid. Yeah. We're too stupid. The public service day so that we really understand government. It's wrong, it's functioning in our lives. What's going on in appreciation of various government agencies, such as the one that I belong to. Uh, at the top of the list there. <laughs> like in communist Russia. Yeah. All right, next one. And this is another one. Uh, why don't we have a day for global peace and government and all nation? Cooperation Day, yeah, yeah, uh, UN type day, October they have one. Nobody celebrates it. All right, next one. By the way, if you like this idea of global cooperation, I invite you all to become a member of the War Resisters League Chicago chapter. Another little commercial break here. <laughs> and there's the website you can go to if you want to join. Next one, please. All right, all right we need something on evolution and the biosphere sustainability. Look what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. All right, next one. I'm saying this is like a version of Thanksgiving. You have a friendship dinner day or a harvest festival to foster harmony. Uh, go yeah. on. Eat this. And you've got to do something. The current holiday isn't working. Uh, the travel is, is just caused something that's wrong here. You should be able to pick, like let's say within the week, a convenient date to get together might be an idea. Or I celebrate it on two weekends like a barbell type thing, or even longer. Or the college. You know, right. Yeah. OK. Now, another one I would like to have is an artistic day for plays and performances of merit and visits to uh, art fairs and museums. Yeah. Yeah. The cultural thing when we celebrate the arts. There's the next one. Yeah. We should get to attend didactic plays uh, that intended to teach people something, yeah. you know, not like this nonsensical entertainment that's out there now. Next one. Here's, I, I've got some things I'm recommending. Uh, you can listen to a guy like this sing. Is he on? It's on. It's pretty good. Now this is this is what we should be with this kind of entertainment we should be having. All right, let's try one more. I guess some of you may think this. Let's go to the next one. You know, that's too political. How about a little Slim Whitman then? We have entertainers of true talent. Your choice. Yeah. And your choice. All right, let's go ahead. Uh, we should have a literature day, a library literature day. Next one. Yeah. And if you want to buy books, you can come to me. <laughs> and I'll sell them to you for library and literature day. Uh, Carol helps us out there. What about Kindle day? No Kindle day? No Kindle day. <laughs> All right, next. We need a science and technology day. I don't, I'm not real fixed on the names here, but a day dedicated to science and technology. Next. Um, to, to combat scientific illiteracy. This is really important because a lot of people are influencing public policy based on very limited knowledge of science and technology. And yet, the legislative authorities 
our representatives are responding to these people who don't really comprehend something. And there's a number of topics where you, you may be able to say, I don't know what I'm talking about, but they're making demands upon what is your position on this when they don't really know what is we're talking about. So this thing is kind of important. All right, next one. Hey, Charles, could you dumb us down for that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't get you. I'm going to throw everything together on a historic event in the Heritage Day. Kind of like a July 4th all thrown together. Uh, <laughs> you actually could could focus on a different historical event every year. It might be an idea. Next one. All right. Now, a lot of people have called to me. I want a date for this person or that person or this person. Um, I said, well, let's see. I came to mind who's kind of been doing this for some time, and the United States Postal Service has been selecting people. Now you can be a living person, can be selected for a stamp. Um, I don't think we should be limited to simply people from the United States. I'd like to see a stamp to Lenin myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or another day, but this is for selecting days to narrow it down. You know, I, we have to call the list. About 800 people I discovered have been featured on stamps. So you're selecting a day for in the, an individual. You're probably going to have to narrow the list. The post office gets 40,000 suggestions to their committee. Um, and they also celebrate anniversaries and events. So that's another type of holiday we might consider. Next one. Um, I also said, who else is dealing in this important Americans? And I, the place I often go to is the National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C., which hangs portraits of influential uh, Americans of substance and achievement. And I highly recommend it if you're in Washington to go there. But I wanted to see what their list was of, of paintings in the National Portrait Gallery discovered is quite extensive, but I also found out that you also could post, they created an online space for you to upload your own picture if you want to be included in the collection of the National Portrait Gallery. Right. So I haven't decided which one of these I'm going to send in for myself. <laughs> But you can look it up, it's kind of cool, I think. Anyhow, go on, but that's just a list of what I was looking at, where you could get ideas for famous Americans that we might have days dedicated to. I think we ought to have a spring type cleanup day, civic improvement next, uh, a neighborhood type day, interpersonal day would be a good idea, get to know your neighbors. Um, Does that mean you get to know your loony labor on that day? Yeah, yeah, the guy with the guns. I think we should have a social progress day for discussion of social change. Understanding of current events. I haven't arrived at a name on this yet. No. That was the the Charles Paydock day. I think we should have a call of the complex oh. today. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. We're the road. <laughs> Hey, you go. He got St. Patty's Day. This is a lot better than that. These are young people oh, yeah. sit around and discuss something. You know, yeah, as, as, we all, as we all get drink our beer. All right, a Labor Day. Yeah. I love this Friday. Yeah. Yeah, it's organized labor for you. Yeah, yeah. There you go. They're knocking down the door. And they're, uh, they're, no, I thought we got to have another one. No, no, no. I think we got to have a day for the tranquility of mind of the American public. <laughs> to get me to this kid, for Andy Anderson, at least. <laughs> but I don't know if you're familiar with the Hidden Hand Conspiracy. And it's obvious, George Washington. No, Stalin. No, yeah, no. Stalin. Comrade Stalin, please. No, Stalin. What about Next Napoleon? Slide. Napoleon. Yeah, there you go, Andy Lincoln. We're all part of this. What's going on here? All right, I think we have to have a day in which we focus on these these questions that are confronting our society. Another one. I have kind of looked up what are the hot issues 
Why not this one? This woman. This woman is your slaughter. Oh, no. <laughs> she was his chosen woman of the year no. by Time Magazine. No way. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, 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 no. You're, you're going to have that lecture on the universe, Bob. What about the four blood moons of the end times? How are you going to discuss that in your meeting? Okay. I like this one. Barack Obama is just a big supervillain. He's just an evil guy. Yeah. But anyhow, you love on conspiracy day, we can clean these up, you know, get out of one way or another. I think we should have a health and nutrition day, yeah. at least get some hot deals oh, yeah. at the local fast food emporium. Go on. I think we actually would like to celebrate oh, agriculture. Yeah, agriculture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think we ought to recognize the contribution of the farmers. Next one. And I think we should have a Great Thoughts and Discovery Day, in which we, we pay about to the, the great ideas that have shaped uh, our civilization. We're thinking about intangibles, right? All day long. Next one. And at the very end of the year, in place perhaps of this nefarious Christmas holiday, which is killing people and just. <laughs> Arming your children, <laughs> but we'd have an authentic activities day for NGOs, buy nothing day, and for charity, and put the put the shopping carts away for a little while. That's it. All right, my life. that's it. All right, thank you. <laughs> We're gonna have a okay. <laughs> All right. We got some. Do you? Do we really need questions, or do you want to get right into rebuttals, Charlie? Yeah. You, you, you do mind to get that. All right. You got any questions? You know, for the speaker? No. Are you kidding? I have one. Okay. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, 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 you slaughtered yeah, every crowd. You suggested, <laughs> if I heard you right, that uh, stamps uh, and other honorifics should be extended to living persons. They do it already. In the United States? Yes. Yes. As as I know. Because I understand you have to be dead in order to be on a It US was stamp. ten years, they went to five, and then they went to living. Now that's have right. any have any living persons? Passed? I'm not aware. Yeah. Okay, because it's my understanding you got to be dead, and there's a no. reason no. for that. Uh, it used to be. You know, it used to be. If if we have a person who thinks, uh, you know, we think he's a great guy, and then we find out more about him, like you said, witness what happened when they named the J. Edgar Hoover Building uh, after J. Edgar Hoover. There were a lot of second thoughts about that, and uh, this is not well, to say that there, there can't be there can't be others that we enthusiastically name it after the person, and then we find out that the guy was actually. Uh, I know where you're coming from. He's talking about a thing like a Nobel Prize is only given like ten years, five, ten years after the discovery. So that they ascertain that it's a genuine fact and discovery and accurate, and there's no. Now you think if, as far as I understand, they wanted on the other side, they wanted to generate some interest in stamps and stamp collecting, and I'm telling you, 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 you got to get out of this thing where putting up statues of generals. On, on horses in parks. Well, we're going to have know, I mean, you, you, they want them to be a little more contemporary, and I think that's where they're at it. I don't know anymore. I just was looking for a very simple list, and I thought there would be a convenient place to look, just like who's in the National Portrait Gallery, you know. But, um, uh, you know, 
contact them if you have some concerns about this. Well, I have some real concerns because there have been too many people that we've all thought were great guys or ladies, and then all of a sudden, with the passage of time, stuff comes out about them that changes the picture entirely. <laughs> and you've got a building or a ship or a stamp honoring them. Uh, you know, that, that becomes a bit of a problem. Well, the thing about this, though, I wasn't thinking of a holiday, and I was also thinking I didn't have time. I was thinking that we select a different person every year. So I guess if using that system, we may make a mistake, but by the time we find out about the mistake, it's already over. And we're only doing these one year at a time. Because I think, and also I think having the same day for the same person over and over again, the, there's a certain, um, oh, it's so-and-so day again, you know. It loses its, this way we might generate some interest in it, you know, in the holiday of picking out people, different people, every year. Yeah. All right, thanks. Mm. Yes, William. So, um, these holidays, they're, they're wonderful. I love the descriptions, but I still have one concern. So, um, we're used to, just as people in our cultures, um, the end of the year. And this winter, we muster up all this energy, this expectation. It's going to be hard to pull away from our traditions, like Christmas and Hanukkah and Ramadan. So I'm thinking that um, the end of the year celebration should be something extra special. So, um, and it's hard what to come you got up with. In mind? Well, I, I'm I'm thinking thinking of, I mean, the parameters As are, long as it's not like that drunken girls. And, and oh, no, no, it's um, like that. Yeah, it's, it's much better, much more wholesome. So, but uh, the parameters are kind of limited. So, you know, we have to come up with a politically correct, all-inclusive, non-denominational, generic winter holiday, something like that. So, um, I was thinking. Sounds like snow. How about um, Kwanzaa? <laughs> so, how, how about this one? It's, wait, wait a minute. It's, um, he doesn't know. We got a rebuttal period that's coming right up. Yeah. Oh, I've, you want? Oh, yeah. I've got, um, <laughs> you know that's a question, or are you can get a little early. We'll have, well, what we do is we heat chat. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you oh, give that as a rebuttal? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. He's been You guy. New guy. Come on. Be cool. All right. All right. New guy. Be cool. New guy. One. How will we deal and face with this uh, this energy at the end of the year that we're so used to in our traditions? Well, what energy? I just know. <laughs> tied biologically to the year. Matter, matter of fact, this is a period of non-action. Matter of fact, the winter period, like we have the New Year's, the Romans didn't even have months. It was, they, those are the last months to get names and to be designated in the original calendar. Um, it was like a period of winter, so, and there was nothing going on. I could see a, an end of the year to, that's not a bad idea to have something at the end of the year to celebrate your accomplishments. I think we also ought to throw into that holiday that we, we take a look at who was defeated and was unsuccessful and maybe humiliate them or something <laughs> like that so it doesn't happen again, you know. Okay. But no, I think a sense of accomplishment would be, you know, what did we do this year? You know, it's like the home stretch. You know? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, a guy like me has got a lot to celebrate every year. You know? What do you think about National Cubs World Series Day? Uh, it's, 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 it's not <laughs> Carl? Well, you know, uh, I know uh, as you said something about a health day. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we have a uh, national smoke out day, so is there going to be a, a no smoking ah, day? Yeah, yeah. I'm all for that. I'm all for it. <laughs> all right, then. Uh, right, man. Yeah. Yeah. What would you do about employer paid holidays? Huh. What would I do about it? Yeah, would you still have employer paid holidays? Right now they don't have to pay. No, it's just the opposite. 
I would ma make it mandatory, and I would. Uh, I didn't maybe didn't convey that. Right now, they don't have to pay you. They don't got to give you nothing. And that's how they can make you work every day of the year, unless you have a union contract. And a lot of union contracts, they don't pay attention to these because they think actually new people. They think the holidays are given or legislated by law. They don't realize it's got to be negotiated. You actually can be creative in contracts regarding holidays. A floating holiday, like one day off a year, like your birthday, is very inexpensive to the employer because he doesn't shut down the store or the factory. So you can negotiate things like that. But one of the things that we have to, and is mandate that employees get compensated and that it be uniformity opportunity to get the day off. That's not the case right now. We are the only country that doesn't even have vacations. You know, we treat we. There's a lot of things that said the United States is the worst place is treats its employees worse than any other country. I've heard this over and over again, and this is kind of an indication of it. Yes, you have no these under these holidays. That's just fiction to a lot of people. That doesn't exist. You know. Yeah. But no, it's got to be mandated and enforced. And if you, if in penal penalties, you got to have some real good penalties if an employer violates this. You know. Um, believe you me, we just had that court settlement, my own union, against this overtime, the time and attendance thing, and I left out the things on wage theft and all that. You gotta, we really got to have some enforcement mechanisms. Because, yeah, we can come up with all kinds of wonderful holidays, like it's Achievement Day, but if nobody can get the day off, it don't mean nothing. And, he, and, he, and we want the day off with some, I'd say you should get a little extra money so that you can go out and have a good time. How's that? All right. Yeah. Okay. Time to have. Let's get that up on all started. Yeah, so you take your babe out for a date, you know, Coca-Cola. So. Right. All right. Let's get the rebuttal no started. Questions? We'll have the rebuttals. How many here have rebuttals? Look at these Comment guys. One, two. All right. Oh. All right. Yeah. Steve Tungus is running up oh, here. Oh, here we are. Followed by William. Where are they getting in line? Leonard. Hey, I'll get this gentleman here. How William? much time we got? Yeah, get up here, young man. What's your name? Come on up. William. Yeah, All right, Bill. All right, you tell him. All right. <laughs> okay. How did you get so short, Charlie? All right. Let's go about four minutes apiece. It's eight o'clock. There's a clock behind you that I got ready to go. Four minutes. Four oh, minutes. Here we go. You ready? First of all, Charlie. Excellent presentation. Excellent presentation. Hey, boy. Really well researched, thought out. Seriously, man. Seriously. Really appreciate that. I, I, I've been doing my homework all week also. I've been uh, thinking about this all year, all my life. You ready? Every first day of the month, it's National Pay Your Rent Day. <laughs> pay, pay your, pay your car, car uh, mortgage, your house mortgage, and your electric bill day. Make sure, pay, pay your electric bill. Every, and if you guys like them, please let me know. If you don't like them, let me know that as well, okay? The second day of the month, National National Tea for Two Day. You have tea with your favorite person. It's kind of like what you mentioned, Charlie, one of those days. Third day of the month, National Bowling Day. You bowl three games that day. Does everybody remember bowling? Bowling. The fourth day is the 4th of July. Every fourth, every fourth of, the, of, the, of the, every month is 4th of July Day. The fifth is a national work five hours and get paid for eight. Yeah. You guys like that. I know you like that. And the sixth every, every sixth is national seek a higher paying job day. Do you have the skills? You gotta ask yourself that question. The seventh day of every month is national day of rest. Everybody should have a day of massages, yoga, and meditation. The eighth Minimum Wage Appreciation Day. I don't know if you guys know or not, but Mr. Fed, you, uh, the, you only get a minimum wage of $7.25 from the feds. 
Guess how much the state of Illinois gives you? Ten dollars. Eight twenty-five. Are we generous in Illinois, huh? Uh, yeah. Nine National Sixty-Nine Day. <laughs> Make your sexy neighbor smile. It's an equal opportunity day. Okay. Tenth day of every month, National Volunteer Day. Volunteer eight hours to help a group or person in need. Kind of like Charlie mentioned that. The 11th, National Casino Day. Since it's the 11th, take $11 and play the nickel and penny slots. You'll have much more fun that way. It'll stretch out longer. The 12th day, National... 12th day is a dozen, right? So National Dunkin' Donuts Day. No. Buy a dozen donuts no. and share it with a half a dozen friends. That's How about that? You get that? Two donuts per person. That's you know what I mean? All right, so that's the 12th day. And we're going to skip the 13th day. We're going to the 14th. National Sweetest Day. It's a day of love, Charlie. They got to have that every 14th of every month. All 13 months. One day a month. 15 is National <laughs> Beer Drinking Day. Attempt to drink 15 beers. The 16th, National Lower the Age of Consent to 16. Strictly voluntary. Strictly voluntary, okay? 18, National Golf 18 Holes Day. 19, National Milkshake Day. Drink a 19 ounce milkshake. 20, National uh, uh, Honor Your Parents Day. 21, National Exercise for 21 Minutes. 22, 2-2, two, two, National Smoke Two Bowls and Two Bongs Day. 23, National Classic, Classic Book Day. 24, National Horseshoe Day. Play 24 games of horseshoe. 25 of every month, International Christmas Day. Hey. 26, National Storytelling Day. Five minute stories all day long. I love it, I love it. 27, Personal uh, Accountability and Responsibility Day. Personal Self or Blame Day. You're not allowed on this day to blame the wealthy, the government, mommy or daddy or spouse or anyone for your social ills, especially your wage. Okay, your 28th National Show and Shoot Your Guns Using a Thousand Rounds of Ammunition. Oh yeah. 29th National Bring Out Your Aliens, Martians and UFO Day. Yeah. 30th National College of Complexes Day Marathon. 24 hours at the College of Complexes. And 31, the most important day, Vote out all incumbents every time day. Thank you. I hate to go, man. Sorry, dude. That's all right. We're good. Why? Was he well prepared? Okay. I, I, I can only say that I would like to combine uh, the, the, the shooting ammunition day with, with the, uh, the in laws day. Okay. Yeah, right. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Um, I mean, uh, Charles was very entertaining, as, as he always is. Yeah. I, I just want to say, uh, in the old days, you know, which, which uh, precedes uh, even Charles, okay, um, every third day was basically a, a day off, okay? In other words, uh, people worked only two uh, out of every three days in, in the good old days, you know, uh, before the Emperor Constantine uh, converted the pagans uh, to... Um, to Christianity. So uh, as far as um, holidays uh, being uh, connected with uh, paid days off, uh, you know, we used to have it a lot better in the old days. Um, okay, um, uh, paganism, no, it came with a cost. You know, the Emperor Constantine in the year 500, he, he converted the, the paganisms, the Christianity, so all of a sudden, uh, like nine tenths of, of, of all Christians uh, believed in the ritual sacrifice of, of, of infants. Okay, so the, there was a little, um, you know, blowback on, on that decision. But uh, for, for what that's worth. Uh, uh, Lincoln, okay, Abraham Lincoln. What do I have him day, uh, his day here? Okay. Um, Okay, yeah, President's Day. Uh, is there a President's Day? Yeah, thank you. Is there such a thing as a President's Day? Yeah. yeah, you, yeah. There is not, okay? Oh. In the U, okay, and Charles knows this, because Charles and I, we both work for our great nation. There is no President's Day, there is Washington's birthday. That is the official day uh, of that day. The President's Day is, is like some states have, have put that in. But um, 
when, when the U.S. government wanted to uh, include uh, Lincoln's birthday, they got blowback from the South, okay, and they gave it up, okay. So the the official uh, uh, federal holiday is Washington's birthday. It does not include Lincoln, and I can tell you that uh, when I started my career with our great nation in 1978, the uh, until 1983, and I would I would go in in uh, Tennessee, and Georgia, and Alabama. Do you, do you know how many uh, Lincoln Mercury dealerships there were? <laughs> Zero. Okay. There was no Lincoln. There was no Southerner that would that would drive a Lincoln car. Okay, uh, th th that is true. So, so uh, you know, so much for the uh, the national aspect of, of our holidays, at least uh, until, um, okay, and, and the native people, okay, our native people, what what are they going to think? What what are they supposed to think when we have uh, Columbus Day? When we have um, Independence Day? When we have these? Um, uh, the, these patriotic, so-called patriotic, patriotic holidays. What, what, what is a Native American, an Indian, uh, supposed to think about that? Okay. Uh, what would you think about it when, when uh, you have something nice going on? You have a beautiful thing going on, and then what you have is uh, you have uh, invaders coming in. You have people taking over. Uh, your your land, and and you're supposed to celebrate that. You're supposed to celebrate Columbus Day. You're supposed to celebrate uh, July Fourth. You're supposed to celebrate uh, even Veterans Day. Okay. A, a holiday that celebrates the, uh, you know, how, you know we have we we have to uh, we have to support our veterans that that put our uh, their 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 asses uh, behind the the lines to protect us, but uh, when, when, they, when they've done that to uh, uh, to subjugate uh, Native peoples, okay. you know, it, 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 it ain't so cool. Okay, uh, Labor Day, we have, um, okay, we had Labor Day. We had, we had May the 1st, okay? International Labor Day. And the, you know who, who got us uh, away from that was uh, the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce said, oh, we're not so cool with, with uh, May the 1st being the, the international lay of, uh, day of, okay. of, of labor for, for American people. And they got it uh, you know, okay, uh, put time, into another day. Your time's up. Oh, okay. And I just wanted to say, um, okay, uh, 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 Lurleen uh, Wallace, okay. Um, I, I was assigned uh, to survey the government of, uh, of Alabama. And they had a, a holiday for Lurleen Wallace. Okay, Time's up. that was George Wallace's wife. Time's and they up. had a day for her. So, thank you, Dan. I'm right. sorry for exceeding. Don't worry. It was too much. That's okay. Let's go. Okay, come on in and go ahead and rebut. So I'm glad to be here at my first. Um, College of Complexes. Wonderful. That's all right. Just, thank you just, so just much for the um, enlightening and um, inspirational, innovative um, creativity and all that. Um, but I still have one concern, and that's about all this winter energy that we're used to mustering up at the end of the year. Uh, Twelve long months, and if the proposed calendar goes off, then thirteen long months is going to seem even longer. So. Um, you know, we're used to these elaborate winter celebrations, and I think we'd be disappointed without this time at the end of the year to um, come together as humans, to muster this energy, delighted in unity and in harmony. So, um, as a politically correct, all-inclusive, non-denominational, generic winter holiday, I propose a much ado about whatever jamboree. <laughs> or, or for short, since that's a mouthful, uh, for short, Mud Butter Jam. So, um, so good night all, uh, happy Mud Butter, 
<laughs> Merry Mud Butter, and uh, have yourself a merry little Mud Butter. Uh, okay. Bill right. Went. Bill <laughs> Went. Where did he go? <laughs> There's an ancient woman saying, "You just must learn to shoot him S. In other words, there's no arguing with taste. And that's basically what this has become. Uh, there's a certain amount of taste in holidays. Uh, in other words, we shouldn't have them. But you should always realize such is the controversy. And so far we don't come to blows over these things, but it's a good idea to realize what people find controversial. Uh, in 1948, a fellow by the name of Frederick Bastiat wrote something called The Law. He says that whatever the law takes from some and gives to another, it creates controversies. And the more you do this, the more controversial it gets. He said, there's no place in the world that confines government to its proper role in the United States. But there are two problems there, tariffs and slavery. I couldn't uh, result in wars. That's what happened. Uh, He's next. Now, our speaker is rather well known here for expressing his unique taste. Not necessarily unique, but I think there's a lot of popular support, but it's still controversial. That's right. And apparently, well, uh, he was. Express kind of opinions like that, you be prepared for a certain amount of controversy. That's right, brother. So, I think I think we ought to think about that sort of thing. Oh, we like controversy here. That's what the college of complexes is all about. That's right. Yeah. But I think when it comes to arguments about tax money and government regulations and so on, also that we have the better. Okay. Okay, next. Right, right, right. Next. 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 Our candidate. Our candidate. We'll put Bill. Everybody. Good one, Bill. Mm -hmm. Rob Sherman, vote for me. And the Green primary in March. Currently, we have 10 federal holidays during the year. I'm proposing a different collection of 10 holidays based on what I heard tonight. <laughs> the current holidays are New Year's, Martin Luther King, George Washington, Memorial, Independence, Hanukkah, Labor, Columbus, Veterans, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. And Hanukkah. We're, we're talking about the current national federal holidays. Hanukkah is not a federal holiday. Very important. You gotta be. So here are the 10 federal holidays that I propose. Keep New Year's Day. Oh, and by the way, these holidays, there are no more than one holiday in any month. So you've got 10 holidays in 10 months, two months without a holiday. So the first holiday is in January would be New Year's. In February would be Valentine's Day, <laughs> the holiday of love. <laughs> Now, I'm from Chicago, so of course in March the holiday will be what? St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day, of course. <laughs> we should make that a national holiday. And everybody in the country should celebrate like we do in Chicago on St. Patrick's Day. That's the third holiday. Nothing in April, and then in, in May, Mother's Day, because none of us would be here if we didn't have a mother. <laughs> Then the fifth holiday would be in June, Father's Day, because uh, uh, all of us have a father, most of us, uh, all of us have a mother, most of us have a father. But, uh, okay, and then to maintain tradition, Independence Day, a uh, patriotic holiday in July, and then in August, on the first Monday in August, Children's Day. Oh, yeah. Children are neglected. Children are ignored. Oh. Children are taken uh, for granted. Before we send them off to school for nine or ten months, 
let's have a day celebrating them. Yeah. So August will be Children's Day. In September, another patriotic holiday, Constitution Day. Oh, yeah. We're not one nation under God. Iran is one nation under God. We're one nation under a constitution. So we should have Constitution Day. How many amendments are there? In, uh, in uh, September. Uh, nothing in October. Of course, we, you know, people will be doing Halloween in October. But uh, for an official, an official federal holiday in November, Thanksgiving, to maintain that tradition where we give thanks to the farmers, Thanksgiving Day. And then. I'm proposing that we eliminate Christmas no. as a federal yeah, holiday yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. why should the Christians yeah. get special no. treatment exactly. yeah, and yeah, yeah. replace no. that on December <laughs> no. 31st because everybody loves a three-day holiday. We love four-day holidays even more. So on December 31st, Science Tech Science and Technology Day, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> suggested yeah, yeah. by Charlie, because <coughs> that way, instead of getting yeah. stupid on religion on December 25th, let's get smart yeah. on science and technology. Yeah, 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 yeah. Heretic! Yeah. Heretic! Yeah. Heretic. Yeah. Yeah. Heretic. Yeah. Yeah. No. I've got 30 yeah. seconds left, so again, lightning bolt. I'll need your votes on March 15th, but you got to pull a green ballot, so instead of voting for Bernie, <laughs> for Rob, because uh, uh, I'll be able to make a difference there wow. in Congress. Wow. Vote for me, or for Rob, on March 15th. And one last thing, I will be your guest speaker three days before that on March 12th. I will be a speaker here. Like, I will be a speaker here on March 12th, yeah. Saturday at 6 p.m. Yeah, ready? Oh, I'm next, Rob. Rob, I'll go next. Rob, I'll go next. Rob, Rob, no, no. I'll go next. Look, let's get drunk on science Rob. and technology. Okay, okay. Tim Bolger. You guys are forgetting the most important <laughs> proposed national holiday. Which is? <laughs> nothing day. Yeah. Oh. Celebrate doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah, a day no, of rest. No, 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 no. A day of relaxation, a day of chilling out in front of the TV where you don't have to cook, you don't have to clean, you don't have to do anything. National nothing day. What are you celebrating? Nothing. What are you doing today? Nothing. What are you going to have today for whatever? A nothing. We just have a national day of nothing. You take the day off, you relax, you don't cook, you don't clean, you chill out, you veg out, you watch television. You, what are you doing? Nothing. Are you taking the kids out to the park? The nope, I'm doing nothing. We just have a nothing day. So what do you say celebrating? And I say we have that in March, where you do nothing. But no television either. Well, then you read a good book or you do something else. Or listen to idea. Or you have a... nothing. You do nothing. You just do absolutely nothing. Okay. Nothing day. Can we have sex on this nothing day? Well, that's up to you. You want to do anything? That's your day. I want to make up. But nothing means nothing. Let your spouse be, lazy. let's just say, lazy, lazy. lazy for a day. Give her, give her a rest. You do nothing. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, what? so much the day before. Yeah, but, then, but you still got a day of doing nothing. So let's celebrate yeah, National Nothing Day. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I think we have to have a Tom. Tom, is that the All right, Brom. Right. Brother Brom. Comrade Brom. Yeah. Well, Comrade Brom. I thought maybe I should tell you about you know, how how our church is celebrating the <laughs> holiday. Next Sunday is not tomorrow, but the 20th. Uh, we're having uh, in the evening at 7 o'clock, and you don't have to make a donation, oh, though you. it would always be welcome. I'm sure it would. Yeah, we will have uh, a Christmas concert. It's a free concert. And uh, the, the choir has been rehearsing, and non-choir members have been rehearsing also. They Where is that? Joined. Where? Uh, that's at Ashland and Morse at 7 o'clock. Uh, finding parking uh, on, well, Sunday. It's, 
it's uh, legal to be illegal. Uh, <laughs> where is that? Where, where is that? Mm -hmm. uh, Ashland Avenue and Morris Avenue, the, uh, the southeast the, corner. What's the name of the... Uh, it's the United Church of Rogers Park. And, uh, oh, uh, on, uh, our, on uh, Tuesday we have holiday... Th that's the 10th. That's this coming Tuesday. We have holiday cheer. Uh, we have a bunch of kids uh, in the neighborhood who come uh, for uh, after-school uh, school, <laughs> uh, where they get help with their homework and uh, help with uh, 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 lessons that are uh, taught there. Uh, and, and they're, you know, uh, many of uh, the, uh, the children in the neighborhood uh, come to our church uh, for. Uh, <laughs> just to be out, not uh, not on the street, uh, and uh, uh, many of them are Muslim. Uh, uh, you know, they're Muslim, or they're they're Roman Catholic, or they're uh, Protestant, or they're Jewish, or they're uh, no religion particular. You know, we we serve. A neighborhood, uh, and and, and uh, the, we try to do good and distribute, uh, you know, with kids stuff uh, that are distributed on on uh, Tuesday, uh, the tenth. Tenth, uh, it can't be. The yeah, that's two days ago, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The, the, the 15th, right. Okay, thank you. And uh, let's see, what else do we do? Oh, we have Christmas Eve, uh, uh, the 24th. Uh, uh, we, uh, we have Holy Communion, and uh, you don't have to be, you don't have to be a Christian to have Holy Communion. We want every day to be Christmas for everybody, Amen. Amen. you know, but that's, that's just one little Methodist church, uh, and uh, you can find churches of different denominations, uh, Christian churches and synagogues and all sorts of religious organizations that certainly help with our evening meal every Sunday evening. Uh, that you know, it's a free meal for for people, uh, whether they're homeless or or, or just want uh, a little fellowship, or you know, and uh, of course we're always looking for people who help with that meal. Much better than the rich church that we're down. So I'm just going to change the next person. Okay, Pat Butler. Okay. Church of the Rich. Which kind of church are you from? Church of the Rich? Church of the Rich. Oh, little neighbor. Little neighbor. Um, Chuck, you came up with an incredible number of possibilities for holidays to be celebrated. It reminds me of the Middle Ages when half the time the people were not working because of the fact that it was a feast day or a holiday or whatever. And in some cases work was forbidden on those days. So I think we probably have to stick to the no more than one national holiday a month. Now, the time what is that? Three or four. The time of the year when we really get our energies up holiday-wise is December and the early part of the new year. It's rooted in ancient tradition. For, I think any Christians in the room here would know that Christ was probably not born in January. Christ was probably born in April. But his birth... His nativity was uh, moved to December 25th because December 25th, the latter part of December, 
was the time when the Romans celebrated Saturnalia. It was a feast intended to be for all Romans, uh, regardless of whether they followed the Olympian religion and worshipped Jupiter, or if they were Greeks, uh, worshipped uh, Zeus uh, and the other gods and goddesses. Uh, it, was, it was a time uh, for people to celebrate. They gave each other other presents. Uh, employers or masters gave their workers presents and they exchanged places. The workers on that day gave orders to the masters and the masters followed. Uh, a number of things were changed around on that day. It gave people a whole new perspective. It was intended to be a day of fun and, yes, abandon. Uh, one of the reasons the early Christians decided to celebrate Christ's birthday uh, at that time was because Saturnalia, uh, as you know, contained perhaps a little bit too much abandon for the tastes of some people. Therefore, I would suggest, in order to get everyone involved, regardless of their religious persuasion or none, to get everyone involved, that there be this end of the year festival, much like Saturnalia, you know, every person could carve out his own interpretation of what Saturnalia should be, and we would all, if only on one day throughout the year, be united in something. You know, we Americans like to think that we're a fairly united people, but we are not. We're divided by party, we're divided by religion, we're divided by our, our various tastes, uh, and uh, consequently, there are few things that we can really agree on. Um, we can't even agree on whether we should have snow at this time of the year. There are people that love it, there are people that hate it. You're not gonna please everyone. But everybody likes a good party. Everybody likes a good time. So, bring back Saturnalia. That would be the holiday that I would bring back, not because of the fact that I am about to go to the temple and uh, worship uh, Zeus, or if you are of the Roman tradition, Jupiter, um, and not because of the fact that I intend to spend all four days engaged in reckless abandon, pleasing all of the senses, although I would do my best uh, to uh, go through the full four days. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that uh, you know we've got to have holidays that are meaningful to people, not holidays that are celebrating people no one ever heard of, that are celebrating causes no one ever heard of. The only thing I wasn't uh, heard mentioned tonight was Confederate Memorial Day, oh, yeah. which in some parts of the country <clears throat> is still a big and important holiday. <clears throat> and if you're from that part of the country, you should continue to, uh, you know, follow, seek the traditions uh, of your forefathers. Uh, you know, <clears throat> if your if your ancestors fought in that cause, you should, you know, recognize that. And uh, you know, it uh, it's the sort of thing that we. We can't have a holiday every day. Sorry, Chuck. And we can't have, and I know how much Chuck would probably like to have his picture on a stamp or a postcard someday. First of all, first of all, you got to be dead, or you should be dead before you get your picture on a stamp. He's going to kill you. So if you really, if you really want your picture on a stamp. That could be arranged. <laughs> we could also get his picture in every post office That's in the country. Threat. That's, That's true. Threat. That's true. It probably is. <laughs> Hail Zeus! <laughs> Six. All right, all right, all right. To kill you. All right, Sid Cohen. But I understand about what they call the winter solstice. Is uh, the the days were getting shorter and shorter, the nights were getting longer and longer, and people thought that the world was more or less coming to an end because they didn't want to see all that darkness. Yeah. So then when the winter solstice shows up, and all of a sudden, the the daylight gets longer and longer. That's why they really celebrated it. That's the real reason for it. 
it wasn't so much that it was a religious holiday, it was just the fact that they thought the world was coming to an end because of the darkness. So they celebrated the light. And uh, that's why the uh, evergreen, ever, it's evergreen, so that's why they used that as, uh, as a symbol of, uh, of, uh, of the days getting longer and longer. But the, most of these holidays are actually business holidays. If you take Christmas, of course, you get all these people going into the stores and buying all these uh, goodies for their kids and buying for each other, and they feel obligated to do that. And the majority of businesses, that's where they make the most business. Most of these stores, that's uh, where they make the biggest profits during that particular period. And of course, uh, uh, Thanksgiving is mostly Turkey Day because <laughs> Actually, the Indians didn't know about eating turkeys. They had, they had other things that they ate. They didn't eat turkeys. So it's, it's mostly a holiday to, to sell turkeys. That's what it is. So most of these holidays are basically uh, to make money, actually. It's, it's a money-making day. I think the holidays is to be celebrated is when human beings made the most progress and make the most progress, let's say. Uh, during Labor Day, they celebrated uh, May 1st because of what happened uh, here in Chicago with the anarchists and everything, mm -hmm. struggling for an eight-hour day. Yes. And that's the real reason for it. And then, of course, we put it off because most of the people in the world celebrated May 1st. And the United States is being very uh, capitalistic and very anti-communist. They don't want to celebrate that because they didn't want the workers to identify with other workers around the world. Right. In fact, even now, when they talk about uh, working class, they even never even mention it. They say middle class. Most people aren't middle class. Most people work for a living. And if you don't work for a living, you can't eat. Middle class is somebody that has a business and hires workers to do their uh, work for them. That's right. That's the middle class the real middle class, and it was never considered that way until, of course, the Cold War and so forth. So we uh, wanted to do away anything suggestive that people earn a living, and that's the most basic and important thing in the world, by working. Without working, you don't have anything. You don't have food, you don't have tables, you don't have houses, you don't have anything else. Working is the most important thing in the world. Unless you're Without trying. working, nothing gets done. So that's what we used to celebrate, people working and earning a living and building up society and building up uh, the culture and everything else. That's what should be celebrated. All right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> Next. Next. Andy Anderson.